Okay, so we're going to estimate a Taylor type rule uh, using both inflation and unemployment. Unemployment is something uh, that wasn't in the original uh, Taylor rule specification. And we're using that as a measure of excess capacity in the economy. And then the Fed funds is the dependent variable. So to get some sense of the type of estimation we're trying to implement here, this is coming from um, uh, Fernanda Nescio, monetary policy when one size does not fit all. And we'll just take this specific, if you like, um, Okay, so we might just use the snipping tool here. And we'll just take the policy rule set out here. And, and we'll edit and copy and go back into our spreadsheet, which I think is this one. And I'll just paste here to one side so that we can keep it as a reference in terms of what we're trying to do. So we're going to take the target rate and then we're going to regress inflation and output now not the output gap i'm going to take the uh, unemployment rate which is a uh, i would have obtained from the federal reserve of st louis and it's civilian unemployment rate percent it's quarterly seasonally adjusted i divide this by 100 for the period that greenspan is in office so that's from 1987 to 2006 and then i get this unemployment set of figures time series going again from 1987 to, to, to 2006 and the data is quarterly now to run the regression then we will come to data tab and go to data analysis and then we tick on the regression option here in the analysis and for the inputs okay so we'll just take these out for a moment and we'll say look let's start with the dependent variable and i'm going to include labels okay so i want the fed funds i want the fed funds rate to appear in the output so that's our fed fund rate and then uh, the independent variables are starting here with inflation and unemployment i include in the labels in the estimation okay and the output then we can put it here just next okay and we can specify an area something like this let's say but the, the output will be much bigger now do we want a constant uh, if i didn't want a constant i would tick this but because i want a constant we leave this unticked okay so we hit okay and we should get an output okay so we have some output here and we'll just widen this column here for a moment and we can see that the there is a you can make a initial comparison we have uh, for the greenspan period we have the coefficient on unemployment now not the unemployment gap the coefficient on unemployment is 0 0.9 rel relatively close to one negative one and we would expect that there's a negative relationship between the Fed funds rate, right? The Fed funds rate, the target rate, or the Fed funds rate and unemployment, because as unemployment increases, governments typically intervene in the economy to re reduce uh, interest rates. And that's to give the economy some uh, accommodation to stimulate the economy. And then we notice that the uh, coefficient on inflation in, inflation in the policy rule is 1.5. We're getting close to uh, 1.5. We have 
and the, of course the intercept is quite high much higher than this one but what we might take into account here is the if we assumed for the period that Greenspan was in office that unemployment was of the order of well we can observe five six seven percent right we might take the view that governments policymakers federal reserve uh, might have a response to an inflation or to an output gap where only when unemployment exceeds maybe four percent will there be a, a an increase in or a reduction in interest rates okay so in theory here if we were to parameterize our rule we would say the fed funds rate fed funds let's get this going fed funds rate could be equal to so we have the fed funds rate you can follow that fed funds rate Fed funds rate would be equal to uh, now what we have here is um, an intercept of 5% so 0.05% or maybe I'll just write it as 5% 5% 5 plus 1.49 times 1.49 times inflation plus or should I say minus because it's unemployment one we don't have one here we have a coefficient of negative zero nine zero nine so on times unemployment okay so times unemployment okay so that's the that's the type of policy rule we've estimated here broadly speaking now that could have been represented again that another way of writing this might be that the fed funds rate instead of having an intercept of five that might be uh, one and here in the for unemployment instead of having just the unemployment rate we might say minus some type of target rate or natural rate so if the view was that the economy is in equilibrium at four percent then the federal reserve wouldn't reduce interest rates the federal reserve uh, wouldn't reduce uh, interest rates unless unemployment exceeded some kind of uh, threshold level like four percent and four percent uh, maybe close to an R type figure. If so, we're getting very, very close to this suggested policy rate here and uh, for the Federal Reserve over the Greenspan period. So if we take the Greenspan responsiveness, um, we had other statistics before uh, relating to estimating the Taylor rule respect to a growth gap and we had coefficient of, on in terms of um, inflation 1.5 uh, uh, times the inflation rate plus 0 0.4 times the output gap and then um, we had a basically a constant close to one percent the r squared for this type of relationship was 50 percent in previous estimates that we made uh, when we use this unemployment uh, gap relationship for the Greenspan period our R squared is a little bit higher 0 0.566 our T stats are a bit stronger so we have four uh, our T stats a T stat of four a T stat of nine and a T stat of 4.8 virtually five for unemployment now again in lots of these type of time series estimates you're going to have serial correlation um, uh, in, in place. So serial correlation normally has the effect of increasing or inflating the 
uh, confidence levels uh, that we have when we run these type of estimations that the t-stats uh, get inflated the r squared gets inflated but even still if no matter what kind of um, adjustment we make here take that into account quite lightly we're going to have t-stats well in excess of two and so the relationship looks quite strong here and our r squared also 0 0.56 that's pretty good saying that there must be other factors also impinging on the decisions of policymakers the fact that unemployment and inflation seem to be explaining 56 percent 57 percent of the variation the fed funds is a relatively strong type of showing now subsequently i ran the regression again and i put in so instead of using uh, going to the data tab and running uh, data analysis it's also possible to run a linest estimation so just to illustrate what i've done here in a linest estimation linest you simply take the y values so again this is the same uh, raw data for running an OLS regression and we take the dependent variable so the known y's and then we regress onto the known y's comma we regress onto the known y's the independent variables we don't include the labels do we want a constant in the regression yes we do true and do we want other statistics uh, true so the r squares and so on and if i hold because it's an array well we can just hit return but then if i come back over and highlight a specific area where i want output so i might come go across three and down four five i've come down here six cells and go back in and then hold down shift control enter we get an array output and the estimates that we get here if i just copy that for a moment if i copy home copy and go back into the green span if i paste and i can just paste paste special values if i just paste the values here paste special values okay so if i just paste the values in here okay again we can see that the 0, 0909 0, 9 corresponds with this figure for its coefficient on unemployment the coefficient on inflation and the coefficient in terms of the intercept are all the same using this linest estimator so the linest estimator allows us to run um regression in addition to the uh, the regression the dedicated regression um, estimation technique available in the data analysis okay so if we were to run a fit then in terms of taking the actual coefficients and multiplying by their respective so if we take the a0 which is the intercept the a1 which is the uh, coefficient on inflation and a2 which is the coefficient on unemployment and just run for the parameters inputs for the variables that i have here multiply uh, take a0 as the constant multiply a1 by multiply a1 by inflation multiply a2 by unemployment and dollarize to hold the um, uh, parameter estimates constant if i pull this down if i eliminate this data here and then okay so if i delete that data out If I remove that data and then was to pull down, okay, we will get the same variables. And then in uh, 
in the next video clip, I'll show how I get the actual Fed funds and compare it to the Fed funds.